All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Chica Chica Learning. And in this video, we're going to explain where the principle of linear impulse and momentum used in engineering dynamics comes from. It's not a bad derivation, it's a pretty useful one, and it's it's pretty straightforward, I think. And so all you got to do is remember Newton's second law. And here that is that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And you've got to remember one kinematic relationship, which is this: the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, like this dv dt. And if I substitute the acceleration into the F equals ma, I will get the sum of the forces is equal to mass times dv dt like this and then when I rearrange some of the terms or I put both sides I multiply both sides by DT then this is M DV like so and what I have here is an setup now that I can integrate with respect to time on the left and with respect to velocity on the right like that Yes, and when I go ahead and I rearrange or I evaluate this some more, I know that this right here, and what I have here is this force and times, times time on the left, and this force times time, which has units of like Newton seconds or pound seconds, is an impulse. It's like a punch. This is the sum of all the impulses and on the right right here, this mass times velocity, you probably remember, is momentum. And so this is a change right here, change in momentum. And what this, what this relationship says is that the sum of all the linear impulses on the particle is equal to the change in momentum. I could even rewrite this another way as the principle of linear impulse and momentum. And if I take this mv1 plus the sum of all the impulses from t1 to t2 is equal to mv2 like this right here and notice these are all vector quantities this is something that we can break up into two equations or three equations depending on how many dimensions that we're working on but if it's two dimensions that means you can break it up into like a horizontal and vertical component the thing i like to do is make sure that we have a schematic here and so what we have is like a particle that is moving with one a specific type of momentum m v1 like this so you know someone is running in one direction or driving in one direction and then it gets impacted or punched the particle gets punched by all these forces that are acting on the particle for a certain period of time you know there might be a force here boom that supply for a certain period of time or that same period of time we have a force here applied for a certain period of time like this okay and each of these over that time can be turned into an impulse t1 to t2 that's acting on the particle t1 to t2 like this and whatever resulting impulse that is that comes out to a certain stage of momentum it changes let's say the direction and the velocity of the momentum of the particle to a different direction mv2 like this yes so this schematic right here i like to emphasize drawing three parts of the schematic when drawing problems with the principle of linear impulse and momentum and and i think that's a good habit to develop all right so as you can imagine the linear impulse or this impulse term right here is is some sort of integral and so that integral could actually you know it basically you could be given force as a function of time like this and whatever the shape of the curve is you know it could be doing this and if we're interested in the impulse from let's say t1 to t2 right here basically this area 
the magnitude of the impulse would represent the area under the curve right here, T1 to T2, F of T dt and whether it's constant linear parabolic cubic whatever sinusoidal you can integrate that it's just math and and so that's how you would calculate the impulse and usually you know like if you have a motor that's driving or like pulling on a cart that will have you know a, a time varying force on the particle the other thing I want to just remind you is that here, this is a vector equation. And so that does mean that we can, we can break up this principle of linear impulse and momentum into scalar equations. Then you can look at, let's say, like a horizontal component. And if you call that the x direction, then this would be like mv1x plus the sum of all the impulses in the x direction is equal to the momentum or the x component of the momentum. And then similarly in the y direction. And you'll notice that this right here, you would use these, you would use the principle of linear impulse all on its own. You don't need to, it's not like the um, principle of work and energy where you're only, it's a, the principle of work and energy is a scalar equation, whereas here, this principle of linear impulse momentum is a vector equation with two components. So you wouldn't try to like use or integrate the F equals MA and the X and Y with these equations. Otherwise, you just end up messing yourself up some more. All right, hopefully that was a nice little intro to the principle of linear impulse and momentum. Take it easy, or in the words of our middle school friends, bruh, <laughs> structure free.